All right, well, I'm here at uh, in our camp here at El Moro. And I think by now we probably mentioned that uh, it's the second day of the trip. Maybe we haven't, I don't know what we're doing. Uh, the fact is, is that uh, both of us have gotten the flu right before the trip. Carol, about a week before we left, um, still suffering some of the symptoms. And I got it like two days before we left. So you can hear my voice is a little raspy. So here it is the second day and we haven't really done anything. Uh, we didn't even get any pictures of our camp yesterday. Just don't have a lot of motivation. We are supposed to stop somewhere on the first day to check out, show you obviously the campground the first day. It's not working out. So I thought I'd just show you a little bit of our campground here in El Moro. We're actually going to start tomorrow. Our hope is, is to take a hike up, a walk, not up on top of El Moro, but a walk out to the panels out there. There's some inscriptions and such, and hopefully get a video done. You know, this, yeah, we, like I said, we hadn't even started one uh, until today, maybe. May not even start until tomorrow, even though I'm talking today. If that makes sense. Well, we are here at El Moro National Monument. And um, excuse me for the low energy. <laughs> I, I'm uh, doing my best, but we are on the trail here up to El Moro or Inscription Rock. Okay, well, we've come up to the split. And fortunately, I don't know, is the trail closed? No, they would put that in the middle of the sidewalk. Yeah, uh, well, I thought maybe I could use it for my excuse of not taking it. That two mile walk, I think, goes up to the top of El Moro and uh, ruins up there. I think the Zuni had a settlement up there. But we are taking the inscription loop here. Yeah, I think it was back in uh, 1982 that I came here the first time, and I believe it was in May. However, I do remember leaving Flagstaff, Arizona, to come here, and it was 18 degrees. All right, so right in the center of the frame, those are some of the bricks from the ancient Pueblo, Zuni Pueblo, that was up there. What was it called, Carol? At Sina. Oh, every turn, it just seems like it's prettier and prettier. So I guess the uh, first European here ever was in uh, 1585. He recorded it in a journal, but he didn't sign his name on the rocks like others did. So I think the first actual inscription on the rock. 1605. My encyclopedia up there. So this is a yeah, it's a pretty much year-round pool, and it's all runoff. It's not fed by a spring. It's just all runoff off the cliffs up there. And we have the, I guess here there's Swiss. It's like almost like a bird figure there. Okay, we have one of the old inscriptions there in the center from 1893. Looks like we lost a pretty cool one. Just noticing on the railing here. Really cool. Okay, so this is one of the, I guess, rare female inscriptions. Really, America and Amelia Bailey. Fancy, dancy, E. Pen Long. Okay, so this P. E. Gilmore Breckenridge is actually went by Peachy, and he was there in 1859, and he was the guy in charge of bringing the camels to the west. Never worked out very well. Well, I. So I have to be honest, uh, even though I was here back in uh, the early 80s, 
I remember just very few things about it. Spanish inscription from 1709. And then this is really kind of cool. I don't know what it is. So that's the blackened inscription, which Pedro Romero in 1751 says, these inscriptions are examples of early well-intentioned but intrusive attempts at preservation work. Early park managers darkened the inscriptions with graphite so that they would be more visible and last longer. They ended this kind of preservation in the 1930s. Trigger's having a good time, sniffing everything. Oh, the great smells on the trail. So we're apparently coming around to the last of the Spanish. Andres Romero in 1774. We got this other one up here. Looks like more of the graphite restoration, doesn't it? Yeah. Here we have some more petroglyphs. Oh yeah, the bear paw right that there. And actually it looks like a couple shields, almost like we saw in Wyoming, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Yeah, interestingly, two of the guys in that Spanish inscription were implicated in a plot to assassinate the colonial governor and were beheaded. Wow, okay. On Santa, on Santa Fe's Plaza in 1643. And the first governor of New Mexico, Don Juan de Ayacate, described in 1605, 15 years before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. Um, he was actually in search of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Yeah, these uh, predate the settlement of America by the pilgrims. That's pretty amazing when you think of it, isn't it? Here we go. We got this guy here, R.H. Orton, Captain, 1st Cavalry, 1st California Cavalry. Yeah, one of those weird figures right there. It's like a giant lizard or something. Awesome swirls. Okay, so I almost missed it. Almost looks like a quail or something. Williamson, Holland, and Udell were members of the first immigrant train to try this route to California in 1858. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. I was noticing some of these are like 1876, so a bit later. And it's kind of interesting, the carved rope here, carved rope around this one. Do you see that, Carol? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. We could keep going around here, but we're not going to keep going. All right, so that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. That was great doing the walk. Uh, yeah. Um, it helps get more into trip mode. Yeah. I'm Do something really cool like that. Yeah. I mean, it's been kind of hard for us with the yeah. flu and stuff. Both of us are pretty low energy and, um, but you know, this was great. Uh, I'm going to go into the visitor center and kind of do what I do in visitor centers. And you guys should be familiar with that by now. Well, I am in the visitor center now and, uh, we're gonna take a look at some of the exhibits in here. Feel free to stop the uh, recording and read. And they are doing construction in here. We're putting in new windows. I love this old pottery. I'd love to get my hands on some of it legally. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? of God and gold. Probably worship the gold more than God. Just didn't want to tell anybody that. Yes, and they brought the camels. Can you imagine the sight of camels? So you see these drawings here. It was one of the 1600s, I think, maybe early 1700s. They had an artist along. They drew a bunch of what they saw. See, so here's Kit Carson. All 
right, so that's the exhibit in here. Well, I think uh, it's time for us to get on the road and uh, get to the next place.